Hello and welcome. My name is Matthew Marquit and this is the second video in the Beginner's Guide to Construct 3. And in this video titled Getting Started, I want to show you guys how you can access the program itself, uh, have some additional resources besides these videos, of course, to learn uh, Construct, and then also how you start a new project and a little bit about the UI of the engine. So let's get started. Now, as far as accessing Construct, it is actually a web-based or a browser-based program. This is not something I said in the previous video, but this is another reason why I decided to choose this engine, because you really don't even need to install anything. You just have to load it up in Google Chrome. So get the latest version of Google Chrome. You need to have a version 57 or higher. So if you get the latest version, you will be fine, and it will run Construct 3. Uh, then go to editor.construct.net, as you can see up here. Now, when you first go to and hit enter, and, you, and you'll see that kind of loading up screen or whatever, it will load up the engine behind the scenes. So you can actually use it if you bookmark it uh, offline, as long as you've loaded it up before. And that's actually one of the questions in the FAQ down here. And there's more stuff in the FAQ. I don't need to visit that now, but just so you understand, yes, you can use it offline, even though it is on a browser. And you'll also see that we have this warning up here. This, at the time of the filming of this video, uh, uh, says that Construct 3 is still in a public beta mode. So um, obviously there will be some changes or maybe some small changes when the full version comes out, but I can't imagine anything huge. So that's why I'm still going to create these videos. Uh, but also it's been in public beta for like five months now. So who knows how long. They said it was only going to be a couple months, and here we are much further along. Um, so I'm just going to create these videos so that you guys uh, can learn this program ahead of time. All right, so we'll just shut this off and it'll bring us up to our start page here. Now, a couple important things to remember is you want to actually register with the company, right? And the cool thing is it is free. So it's simple. You see at the top here where it says free edition guest. The reason why you want to register is you want to log in and logging in will give you other things. So you can see right here, we have a limit to how many events we can do in a free version without a login. And that's 25 events. And I mentioned events before, and that's basically your lines of code. Um, and uh, so if you want more and 50 of them for the free version with a login you just simply click on this go to register i don't need to show you get the idea and then you get it and log in and as you can see right here i'm going to log in keep myself logged in and bam and now if i go over to the view details you'll now see i now have 50 uh, events per project. Now, of course, you're limited with other things, but like I said, these videos are going to help you learn how to do a project within the free version, which is a great version to learn from. Now, there are paid versions, right? Obviously. And so the paid versions, if you're trying to create something larger, right? You want to actually sell a game. Uh, you want to make money off of it. Uh, there is a pricing page. So I'm going to click on this real quick just to show you. So I'm skipping a little bit ahead here, but I do want to show you the pricing. So yeah, they have the free trial and they will show you what you get, right? right with each one so you can see that there's a lot of features that you don't get in the free one um, but once again like i said it's really great to learn if you're a hobbyist or just an individual trying to make games it's 99 dollars a year obviously at the time of this video and 149 for business uh, professionals they even have educational versions that you can get with un with basically unlimited full access right so those are a couple of the options but like i said we're going to be using the free version uh, throughout this tutorial series now, another major thing that you want to do once, of course, you've logged in, you created your account and so on, I'm going to skip back to this here, right, is we want to enable pop-ups. Now, there's a couple of things that are important. We're going to click on here on the settings and you can see over here in my notes, right? So we're going to click on the settings up here and we're going to go down to settings, right, in Google Chrome. We're going to scroll to the bottom where it says advanced, okay, and we're going to expand that out. Then we're going to scroll down a little bit from there. We're going to look for content settings, this section here. From there, we're going to look up for pop-ups. You'll see it right here. And inside pop-ups, you have a little section that allows you to choose which website. So you hit add, and you can choose websites you want to add. Of course, add the editor in there, and you'll be good to go as far as the Google Chrome itself. But if you happen to have like an, an ad block like this also, so I have ad block, block plus, which is an extension. If you have something like that, make sure that you're on the site. I've already disabled it, but you can see it right here. We can come in here and disable on site. So just remember to enable pop-ups either with third party and, of course, the first party uh, pop-up blockers. OK, so you want to make sure that that gets through. Now, uh, as I said before in the beginning of the video, I also want to show you some other resources that can help you learn besides my videos. But we'll see here, of course, you have the official site. So there's construct.net. 
right? I show you the pricing section right there. The other great thing is this splash or start page here, right? As we can see up here, the start page. Cool thing about it is it gives us a whole bunch of example projects that we can download and backwards engineer. You can open up, look at their events, look at their sprites, look at their animations and learn how they did it, which is really awesome. Uh, I find that's one of my favorite ways to learn personally. Um, but they also have other things, some tech demos, some other examples, templates, and so on. So this is also a great site to use to learn a little bit more. Now, as I mentioned in the previous video, my uh, my assets that I'm using, so we see the assets that are here. This is done by an artist, and I'm going to totally kill his name because I have no idea how to say this. Bilge Khan? I'm not really sure, um, but uh, I found his uh, stuff on the actual um, store for Construct, and we're loading it up here, and it's called the Super Platformer Assets. It's $7.99. Sometimes they have sales, so check that out or whatever, but $7.99 is not a lot, and actually what you see in my scene is just some of the sprites. I didn't even use like half off the sprites he had so he's got way more if you want to take a look at that he even has what is known as the super platformer engine if you're willing to uh, purchase that too that's a little bit more 1649 um, but this one will give you all of the stuff including the events to do things like climb ladders and use like mushrooms as jump pads and jump into water and other types of enemies that follow the player and on and on and on right and so I have a lot more simple you know kind of example of things and then the cool arrow effect that he has that I'm showing you uh, that was from this engine so I definitely 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 recommend that you guys uh, support this artist um, and uh, purchase those things um, but other ways that you can um uh, learn is through uh, three other resources that I found uh, and that is one uh, there's this guy named Jeremy Alexander he's actually the one that created the water sprite that I use in the scene so I wanted to put some water in the bottom and he had a water sprite in there so I'll give him credit for that too um, but Jeremy Alexander he has a YouTube channel but he also uh, I believe he makes his most money through Udemy so if you click on that you can see it right here if you look up Udemy which is a place to learn other content right uh, you can he has some free tutorials he also has some paid ones this also goes on sale quite often so even though it says like 150 bucks you know just look for sales they, they happen all the time and you end up getting for like 10 bucks or something so it's totally worth it this guy's great uh, he just covers so much content it's insane so you can learn from him just the same another guy named Anthony Jordan whose YouTube channel called action cancel is also awesome uh, he's the only other person I know that has posted any videos of construct 3 on the internet um, but you can see here he's got a lot of great stuff too um, and so uh, and he, and he even shows you how to do, like like I said, different types of uh, things. But he's just a brilliant artist, brilliant designer. Uh, definitely look at his stuff um, and uh, and learn, too. And then the last one is the Game Dev uh, YouTube channel. Uh, this one, they just have a series of videos um, that... Uh, I'm going to pause it here because the music automatically plays. But they have a series of videos that don't have any audio as far as... Uh, I shouldn't say audio, but dialogue. So you don't hear anybody talking. They just show you how to do stuff. I learned a couple of things through them also. So definitely worth watching if you want to expand your uh, knowledge on how to use Construct. So there you go. So those are some of your best resources, obviously, beyond this Beginner's Guide to Construct 3. Now let's talk about how we actually launch something. So I'm going to shut off all these extra browsers. And that's actually one of the cool things about this being a browser-based engine, right, is you can open up multiple browsers and I can have different things loaded up in different uh, different tabs. So that's really cool too. So you can open up something, um, you know, and if you've done something in one, you can copy and paste it into the other. It's just really awesome. So, uh, I, you know, that's another reason why I really love this engine. Um, but if you start off here, and as I said before, when you first load up, you get your little screen here. You just hit OK, right? And obviously, if we're going to do a new project. I mean, uh, it's a new project here, right? So we just click on the new project button. We can name it. Now, what I have here is I have it, uh, I'm going to call it the final 2D platformer. As for the class that I am building these tutorials for is the final. So we're going to put in there the final 2D platform. And you can also choose a preset of kind of the layout that you want it uh, to be. There's lots of different layouts to choose. We're going to do retro style. We're just going to leave the viewport size as is. We can always change it later. Right, and viewport is basically what you see, like the window itself that renders. And then you can choose the ori orientation that you want is portrait or landscape. So either taller or wider, we're going to do wider with landscape. And then by uh, automatically, if you choose retro style, it clicks on optimize for pixel art. But since we're using pixel art, we're going to have that checked and we're going to hit create. So this will load up the scene here. And this is what the basic interface looks like. Of course, we can move these elements around, expand them, so on and so forth. 
right? So let's talk a little bit about what we're seeing here. Now, first things first, though, before we even move on with that, I do want to tell you a little hotkey in Windows. That's great. If you hit F11 in Chrome, it does full screen mode. So you get rid of all the extra stuff, both on the bottom and the top of the screen. If you hit F11 again, it will toggle back. But if you want to use a little bit of extra real estate, F11 is your best friend uh, as far as that's concerned. Now, the other great thing about this editor is that you can you can have Cloud Save incorporated into it. So if you're using something like Google Drive, uh, OneDrive, um, or you know Dropbox, uh, you can do that. If you come up here to Menu, right, and we go to Project, you can click on Save As and choose Cloud Save. Now, I've already done this, and I've already linked it to my Google Drive, so that's why it's automatically loading this up. But it looks at my Google Drive, and it finds all of the construct uh, projects in my Google Drive and just loads them here. And then every time I save from here on out, it will automatically upload it to Google Drive. Now, of course, you can always download these things. We come over here, you go to project, you know, and you save. You can you can even open them or save them. Like I can download a copy from it. I can save it to my local browser. So don't feel like you have to use cloud service, but it is pretty awesome if you do that. But of course, you want to log in to whatever service you're using. Okay, so let's take a look quickly at the interface, right? So the interface is pretty simple. We have what is known as the quick bar up here, and I've already showed you a little bit about it with the menu button, which allows us to save and preview and debug and open and new and that kind of stuff, right? These are the bars. So all these different elements are called bars, and these show the bars that are in the scene, and the ones that are not checked and are not visible will only come with a paid version. So we don't have access to any of these with the free version, okay? Um, you know, there's count setting, things like this, the store, some settings, help and about and so on. Okay, now you can also save by using this button. We can, you know, undo and redo with these. We can also preview our build by pushing this button. So there's different ways of previewing. Okay, you also have your debug mode. So you can see kind of what's going on behind the scenes. It'll give you some numbers on the bottom. So you can test things out, um, even if they're not uh, visually being represented somehow in your scene, which is pretty awesome also. And then you have your little tabs. In this case, we have a start page. We've got a layout. And we got our event sheet. So I've kind of got this mushed a little bit. So if I pull it back out, you'll see that this pops up here. We don't need the start page. So you can always shut that off but you do want to make sure that your layout and event sheets are still there um, you can reopen them uh, by clicking over here right and stuff if you've got them closed but there you go so um, that's your quick bar right and we kind of covered that real fast and uh, and just and I, and I mentioned this down here but the default page yes is the start page the workspace so where you're working is known as your layout and your event sheet is basically where you code and I put that in of course quotations because yes it's more of a visual scripting than pure coding Okay, so in your workspace, when we see this, you see this dotted line here. This is basically your visual range uh, when it loads up. So if you're playing on mobile or on the PC, that's what you'll see. That's the viewable area. The entire level spans this area, and you can see that these numbers are all set up in here. So here's the size and so on, right? But this right here, like I said, represents the, the basically the viewport window, right? Um, or what's being rendered in the window resolution. Okay, now navigation's simple. Just got to remember middle mouse or the, the, the mouse wheel is your best friend here. So if you just scroll the mouse wheel, you can kind of pan up and down. Um, if you hold down control and mouse wheel, you can zoom in and out. And if you uh, press down mouse wheel, you can pan everywhere, not just up and down, but pretty much everywhere. Now spacebar will also let you pan, but I don't know why you'd want to press that when you know, you're just hitting middle mouse for everything anyways. So it's up to you how you want to do that. So that's how you can quickly do some navigation, right? Middle mouse button, zoom in and out uh, with control, and then just the middle mouse button press down, right? And we can pan. All right, so what are the other bars that we have in the menu, obviously, other than this? Well, the other cool thing about some of these bars, and we'll see they're you know delineated by these little blue tabs, you can pull them off and put them anywhere you want. And it'll even give you a little preview, so you can kind of hover these over these different areas, and it'll show you. You can even have them floating if you want. So it can just be floating, and you can move it somewhere else or a second screen. I'm just going to put it back. You get the idea, right? But here they are. The first one's properties over here, and properties allows you to, and it's context sensitive, but whatever you have selected, it will update. So you'll see that if there's any settings for your object, your thing the properties of it will be here and you can change those settings over here now your project tab is basically all of your assets right all of your stuff so you can actually have multiple layouts you can think of layouts as different levels in the game or like one can be a splash screen another one can be the game itself and then another one's you know the credits i mean there's all sorts of different things you can do with layouts the events right so you can actually even do separate event sheets right even for the same layout if you want you can do that too and then this is where you'll find all the other things like when you import music and sounds 
backgrounds and videos and fonts and, and so on, and any objects you create, any sprites you bring in, all the stuff you'll find here, and then you can drag it into the scene. And then the last two that we see down here is our layers and tile map bars. Uh, layers are here. You can see there's two little tabs. So we click on layers and then the other one is tile maps. We will begin to talk about those in additional videos. As you can see here in video three, we will cover the background and tile map. So we will immediately get to that in the, in the next video. So uh, either way, hopefully this video helps you, really gives you a good understanding of the basics, how we can get started. And I will see you guys in the next video.